So, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for so many people turning up. We've got a impact GCSE revision session tonight, um, and we've got a couple of exciting things happen. We've got Angus here; he's going to share some of the work that he's been doing in RE in particular, um, and share some of the resources that he's been using. And at twenty past four, we're going to be joined on a Google Hangout with a teacher called Mike Tid. Mike is head of geography at Gillingham School in North Dorset. Um, and he's going to be sharing some of the things that he does to support GCC revision with his people. So hopefully it'll be a nice opportunity for us to look outside of our packer and see what somebody else is up to. Um, he's also going to share a presentation on some of the resources that he uses in his class as well. So it's just um, hopefully a different approach. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mr Dawson. Thank you, Mr Dawson, to share a couple of things that you use okay. currently um, in your approach. Hello, everyone. Um, I, I feel like I've been quite a pioneer in with regard to um, revision guides and resources and it's some years ago that I began using a digital recorder to um, record pre-made um, revision guides to all of the stuff I'm from philosophy and ethics. Now, if you're a philosophy and ethics student you're going to have to sit four one-hour exams in the summer. They normally do two in May and two in June and that, I mean it's a significant um, challenge to the students. Um, so what I did was I sat down with my digital recorder, which is something similar to the ones we have in modern languages. Very, very simple to use. You, um, and then you just compose yourself. And really, I, I just walked around my study and recorded the entire course, philosophy and ethics course. And then, um, and it comes in various guises. It was um, posted on um, Facebook for a, a year before we became an academy. And then when we became an academy... I talked to Gary, and within um, within all the folders that I shared with my Year 11 students, I've got 78 philosophy and ethics candidates. And they've all got access to around about two and a half hours of um, audio revision, which um, I think is great. It means that they can upload it onto their MP3 players. Um, they can burn it onto a CD and put it in the car. And... Um, it's really been met with um, lots of enthusiasm from the students. Should we just have a look at yeah, one of Yeah, I click them? on one of them? So um, the first one. Why don't you pick it? Yeah, go part two, something like that, so we're deep into it now. I'm not announcing what's going on. So effectively, all it is is an audio, an audio um, narrative with some pictures that just superimpose at the top. what God is like. Sometimes the word characteristics is used to describe the elements of the Christian God and I have put together a mnemonic called Boomjetic which will help you remember 12 different ways of thinking about God. In the exam it's important to mention as many as you can. So for instance if it was a D part question worth six marks you would need to explain six different elements of what, what the God is like. So let's begin with Boomjetic. The B stands for benevolent, or benevolent. all good and all. I mean, um, we've all been teachers a long time, and I'm sure you go through that, that, that experience mm -hmm. where you just wish there's one other thing you'd like to say to them before they sit the exam. There's one more thing. Oh, by the way, and this gives you the opportunity. So, I mean, you notice I was talking about a D part question there. In the philosophy and ethics um, exam, there are five questions, an A, B, C, D, or an E part question. And this has given me the scope to really get right down into, burrow down into the, the technical aspects, the structural aspects, the content parts of each of those questions. And really, there's nothing untouched. I'm really happy with this. I mean, it could be improved in terms of be nicer if it was someone with a really nice voice who was saying it. And, I mean, that kind of leads Stephen me... Stephen Fry, maybe, or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but if Gary just clicks on the tab at the top, what, what I then did was I got really excited, and I ran um, one of the components of the revision guide through a voice recognition bit of software, and it, and it produced this, which is... You can see that's a page there. There's, there's about 10 pages of this. Now, it didn't just... I had to read the whole thing and do loads of corrections. It was a real strain. But that's a quarter of the revision guide there, all on paper. And one day it's my aspiration to get some key, maybe sixth form students, 
or maybe anyone actually, some students, to sit um, with Jim, in fact you can see how many pages it is, and, um, and record it so it wouldn't be me speaking it, it would be somebody who they, I don't know, just a different voice, which I think helps. So that's really that, I mean, it means that you can reach out to them wherever they are, and uh, it's there. Natalie? Um, so is this a school one that you're using? Yeah, I bought this for school resources, um, it's really simple to use, it's yeah. self-taught. We you just plug and play into your... Laptop. Yeah, we've got a range of ways that we can create videos like, oh, yeah. like, like you did now. So, for example, um, there's different audio recorders you can use on the Chromebooks, there's different Chrome apps available. So if you just want to make a simple audio um, feature, you can do that. If you want to do video recording, um, if you're using a, if you're using a Chromebook, you can use things like Wii Video, or you can use simple things like a live Hangout. Which a live Hangout a Hangout's what we're going to do in a minute. It's Google's version of Skypey, um, and with a live Hangout, you can send that recording straight to YouTube. So that as soon as you're filming the video, you could be doing it with the children talking about something. That video can go straight onto YouTube, and that YouTube video can be made available. Um, things like iPads, there's lots of different tools that you can use to record content on an iPad. They make great revision videos. So things like Screenshot is an app that I've talked about a lot before in terms of the iPad workshops that we've done. The Screenshot is basically a, a whiteboard, so when you press record, it records your every movement on that whiteboard. So it's great for things like maths, so you can show your maths, caps, yeah. maths sums, uh, or the, the method that you're using, um, and then it records your voice as well. Um, and obviously, if you don't have an iPad, we can, there's ones from IT support that can be borrowed, different things like that. Um, equally, there's an app on iPads called Explain Everything. We have a 200 user license for that, and that's a more advanced tool than Screenshot. Um, and that enables you to use multiple whiteboards and kind of build a story up with, with work, particularly useful if you're doing more extended things. Um, and then there are other tools as well, like on the Mac, like the tool that I'm using tonight, we can do a screen record and it can record whatever's on the screen, whatever audio is happening around. That, that's a really professional and useful tool to use and it's in a very, very high quality format. And then equally, you can just go and borrow a camera from Lisa, set it up and press record and then just speak into it kind of thing um, with your whiteboard in the background. So there's different ways you can do it. Excuse me, Alex, can you explain to me again, how did you get the writing? Did you use a program to, trans yeah. to do the yeah. transcript? That's right. And what did you take. use? Well, Jim Potter's got it, so if you talk to him. What's it called? Voice recognition oh, software. Voice recognition software, okay. Yeah, there's different software out there. Um, the other, it's something that in um, the LSC we've been exploring a little bit, we can link them mm -hmm. with Jules, oh. Jules from um, Dorset Coat Council came into the sort of send support for some of our students because Dragon Dictation in particular has become much more reliable than it ever has been. It's been a piece of software that's been around for a long time, um, but it's becoming more and more reliable now. Yeah. Is there something on the Chromebooks you can actually get students to record into? And hmm. yeah, well, there's still those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, 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 there's various different audio recording apps that we can search for in the app store and then have any of those that are useful. Um, there's a website called www.spreaker.com. That's S P R E A K E R, and that enables for podcast recording. So some of the digital leaders have been using it with Will Whitby to come back in and some work with them, and they've been using this site. And um, it's not great at editing, but it's great for just doing live kind of broadcast and stuff. Um, and they love doing that, and it kind of listens to that. So they make scripts beforehand, and um, you know, that's kind of a vision activity, and then go on to Spreaker and the Chromebook, and they can record a little podcast. The great thing about Spreaker is that it instantly makes this kind of embedded player that you can put into any website or just share the link out and they can play it on any device. So it works on iPads, it works on mobile phones. Anything with a data connection basically it works with. So that, that can be really useful. Um, so there are lots of tools out there and things available. One, I mean, one thing I'd say is just really go for it, don't worry too much, don't get too hooked up about writing a script out or worry if you make a mistake in the middle of it. Just get on with it because the kids will, they will it's just adding quality to what they've got. Mm. No, it's so just an addition, you know. You can do something very similar mm. as a class event. You know, different, um, mm. different students can use hey, Mike. those, those uh, technologies to talk about their strengths and share it with all the other students. Yeah. And, you know, they'll be using How are you doing, mate? Can you hear me? Fantastic. Okay, well, everyone, let me introduce you to Mike. This is Mike Tidd. Uh, can let everyone say hello and give them away. Hi. We've got, we've got a few people in, in and about and around behind me as well. 
Um, thanks for joining us, Mike. It's great to have you uh, working and um, that you're able to hear us and we're able to hear you. We, we tried it about an hour ago and we, we can, Mike can hear us. So uh, Mike's going to share with us a few thoughts on um, sort of the work that he does, um, in particular um, the resources that he uses in his class and um, some thoughts on GCSE revision and how do you think? I don't know what order you want to take it in, Mike. Um, it's up to you, really. Uh, would you want to go for my presentation? Yeah, that'd be from great. Do you know how to use then, uh, screen share, mate? On the on the left hand side, there's a green um, second one down. There's a screen share. Do you see that? Let's have a look. Up here. Not just yet. You've gone frozen. So yet yeah, we're there. Fantastic. That's good. Good okay, me. Uh, you can hear me, but you can't see me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, right, now, this is a uh, presentation that I, I shared with Tink Dorset last Thursday evening at the uh, Badger Brewery. And it, it's basically it's like a coming together of the last 10 years of what I've been doing as a, as a job for me, as a teacher. Uh, I came kind of teaching a little bit late. I used to work in, in banking and uh, in finance. And, uh, all my friends decided to persuade me to become a teacher. Uh, and over a couple of years one night, so I'd be quite good at becoming a teacher. Uh, but I, I found quite early on that um, I became quite stuck as a teacher. And the, the only way I could get around this was sort of like a variety of activities. And so I became like a magpie of like stealing ideas. Um, sharing and listening to people, just to make sure that I never got stuck in the mud. And I suppose they come up my tools of the trade and things that I've picked up along the way. And I suppose over to in the next five minutes or so, I'll show you a few ideas that I use and, and some ideas that we use for uh, our GCC and A-level classes. So I've been teaching for 10 years now. I'm in my third school now. I've been working out second time as head of the department. And uh, I've drawn quite a lot of inspiration from the Olympics the last two years. And there was a guy called David Browster, who was in charge of British cycling, who uh, gave, gave me quite a lot of ideas. Because he looked at the price, the small changes, the small measures, the things that can make a difference. And I suppose with my teaching, I've been picking up lots of little ideas and then bringing them together. Try and improve me as a teacher. I'm still developing today. And Browse's uh, famous thing was uh, cleaning the fingernails of the British cyclist because uh, he noticed that they were putting their hands in their mouth when they were eating, which he thought we've actually cleaned our fingernails and washed our hands more regular. Perhaps we wouldn't be so much ill and perhaps become better athletes. And it was something that the Italians and the French were doing, but there were small changes. So there's a few ideas, some of them might be useful, some of them might be a little uh, One of them is um, sticky notes. I use sticky notes quite a lot in my classrooms. Mike, can um, I, Mike, two um, seconds, can I just stop for a second? I'm, Mike, I'm not, yeah. we're just seeing your first slide at the moment. Is that, are you still on that one or have you moved on? No, I've moved on. Because we're just seeing your, that's it. Yeah, that's great. Is that on? No, we're not seeing the presentation view. So if we can click, if you just click through on the, other, I can see your mouse now. That. That'd be great. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So sticky notes is something I use for starters or for papers. Uh, my lower bit is light here because it limits how much they can write. And the higher bit is it's quite frustrating because it makes them more concise, so they have to get straight to the point. And I use a starter so it gives you know, to every single student. They all have one, and they all have to take part. And you can see prior knowledge and their learning. Uh, we're speaking of well. Um, you can play a variety of games, like taboo, keywords. Uh, I use it a lot for revision, especially in geography, uh, just to try and think about terms and knowledge. With that as well, there's a thing called Foxit, which is a, a free online quiz-making mach uh, machine, basically, it's software. Absolutely free. Uh, there's no exchange of data or personal details. All you have to do is you have to log on. You create your quizzes. They can be uh, multiple choice. Uh, they can be uh, a variety of answers or yes or no. And then when the kids come into the classroom, they can use mobile phones, tablets, uh, PCs, 
And the only thing we've got to do is go to the website and type in your room number. Now, for me, my room number is in the top right-hand corner. So my students would type that in. And when I hit start my PC, the quiz will appear on their phone or wherever, and they can start going through the question. And you can create it with the answers that appear on their phone. And for you as a teacher, you get instant results about how they're doing. Um, also, Twitter is quite a good idea as well, I use, especially my A-level classes. Uh, it's getting quite a uh, lot of variety, get a lot of interaction. But you can also use the concepts as well, especially the theory of like summing up what they've learned if they've left them in a hundred and forty characters or less. Uh, some of the kids do like is cakes. Uh, I, I like cakes. So I encourage the kids to make cakes if you can. And my year seven's reef is doing a, a volcano project. And you can see this one, this was out of the heavens, which uh, exploded out of the side of the mountain. And you can see they've got that of green on one side, vegetation, whilst on the other side it's blown out. And they've probably had a few of as well. But it's a good excuse to eat <laughs> uh, Also in my room, I've got my, uh, my big world map of the world. Uh, but it's actually a shower curtain. $14.99 on Amazon. And it's really good because you can use uh, dry white markers and pens. And I do it as like a thinking tool. So during the week, there's case studies, places we're looking at. End of the week, I just wipe it clean and then we start from scratch. But I also do country as well. It's good for the class if they come in and they can see what the other year group are doing and looking at. Um, I do a thing called rock scaping. I do this with uh, A-level classes. Uh, when we go to Barcelona every year and look at rebranding, and we, we try to get them, develop their perception skills. So we might give them photos, various sites, uh, I'll get to look on Google and uh, type in El Ravel in Barcelona, and they can develop their own perception, their own idea about what a place looks like. Uh, models is a good way as well. We do some rainforests and deserts, just get their ideas about adaptation. You can do a variety of things. Uh, one of my favourite things at the moment is the uh, X Factor uh, voiceover. You can actually download the app for 69p and uh, you can have the voice of the X Factor on your, on your phone or your laptop or your tablet and I use it for my homework stuff. So it could be, Rory, you've not done your homework. Come to the front for detection. So the kids quite like it. It might be a fun way or it could be, that's a volcano kick. So it's a different way of getting involved. Uh, we do a lot of games and quizzes with them like Dragon's Den, uh, the apprentice kind of ideas, uh, just to get in groups and sharing ideas. Uh, most of the time, um, I, I try not to get them to choose their own groups. I might use a, like a map that's generator, like teachict.com. It, it's free. All you've got to do is export your class list from your Excel list, and then you can just hit roll, and there's a whole variety of these uh, math and word generators. On there, which are free to do. Um, I do a thing called rucksacks as well. So we're looking at concepts or, or place we're looking at or particular issue, and they unwrap the rack and look at the ideas and try to work out what we're looking at in today's lesson or a variety of topics. Uh, another thing is um, we call this one from the point of the marketplace. Like I put these groups, I draw a circle in the middle of their piece of paper. And there's two rules. Every person must have a pen and they must not write in the circle. Then I'll give them the question that could be, uh, how do we solve climate change? And every student will have to write their ideas around the sheet, but not in the circle. And, and once they have that two or three minutes to think about it, they have to read each other's work or be signed on the ultimate or the only answer, which they write in a circle. Now, getting on to uh, looking at uh, revision, the CMA level, but when we do a lot of online boxes, now every student may level groups gets their own username and password to go onto their own research blogs, which we've created, and all we do is police them, 
uh, they're in charge. And especially for A-level geography, there's a lot of case studies, a lot of research, and the kids are uh, based by now case studies, the articles they can read, uh, the YouTube clips, and them onto the blogs themselves. We also do a lot of filming for the small world. Uh, we've done things like TIG news and like the geography crew, there's different apps and music. Uh, and acting and news casting, just to try and get context over. And it's really good because they can do it themselves, do it in their own time, it's a nice easy homework, and they can use it as a revision tool for later on. Now, uh, with that as well, when we've been trying it with our ECE classes, we um, give them a variety of. Can you see me now? No. No. That's it. We give them, call them two folders. We give them a green folder and a red folder. Now we look at physical geography and human geography. Now for each folder they get their own exercise book as well. In their folder. And we give them a thing called learning as well. So we're actually giving them the, the, the content they can need for their GCSE. And we expect them to read this before the lesson. So it's kind of by lesson by lesson in the learning. So they go home and read it. They come into our lessons with prior knowledge. And we basically build upon that. So we expect them to have this knowledge before they come into the room. So we have activities built around this prior knowledge. And then when they come to revision, they've got all their flip learning, all their folders of work and their exams and other bits and pieces of work out, interviews, position posters, and their own exercise book, human and the physical. And once they get to revision, it's about it three times in total. And it's now a variation of the itself. Over to you, Gary. Thank you very much, Mike. That's that's really, really useful, I'm sure, and I'm sure colleagues, you know, will appreciate that. Has anyone got any questions for Mike about any of the things that he shared in particular? What was the quiz site called? The one that makes the lessons for Socrative. Socrative, yeah. Absolutely free. Uh, and our classes really like using it. You can use it on PC, tablets, mobile phones. Yeah, the great, whatever you the great thing about Socrative is, is there's iPad apps and Windows apps and things like that, or you can just use it through a browser. So you, they yeah, I like them being able to log into it. Just using their phone books, yeah. And then you get, you get the results back there quite like races. Yeah, you can rocket rate off and things like that. That's right. Anyone got any other questions for Mike? No? Okay, Mike, let's just say thank you then, mate, because that was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it, mate. Take care. Cheers, Gary. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, um, that kind of summarises sort of the key things in the chest note. We've also got a revision guide that serves kind of put together that, that can 